We're a nation drowning in rubbish. We're swamped with waste. There's a bit of everything in it. It's disgusting. Infested with filth. Stinks, doesn't it? Yeah. The average household produces more than a tonne of waste every year. Fly tippers have never been so busy. But across the country, there's a hidden army. Can you see me? No, not at all, Glenn. Waging a war against grime. Oh, poo sausage. I'm not a connoisseur, but I can tell you it hasn't been blocked that long because it's still nice and brown. Meet the enforcers and inspectors out to nail the little outs. This is not acceptable. Look, it says no fly tipping. The fine is £100. What? And the fearless teams. I've seen five or six needles without even looking properly. Called in to clear up our mess. Big, big bit of poo. What do you think that was, Steve? Chicken, cider. It's dirty work. Love that smell. <laughs> but someone's got to do it. Coming up at the sewage treatment works near Newcastle. Got a large blockage there. Yeah. The team face a wet white monstrosity that could overflow into the Tyne. We've got to get the whole lot out. A community protection officer. I'm not picking that up. Confronts his biggest fear. <laughs> I can't do that. And down in Hampshire... Look at this mess. ..a couple of vigilante waste warriors... I'm determined to catch this guy. ..are on a stakeout to catch a serial fly-tipper. I want to see him prosecuted. I want to see them fined. There's a van, and it's a tipper. It's a tipper. <laughs> the Malvern Hills. An area of outstanding natural beauty. It's miles of gorgeous landscape. Freshwater springs. Come on in. Come on. And acres of woodland make it a haven for walkers and their four-legged friends. But no matter how cute the dog, <laughs> the UK's estimated 9.9 .9 million canines have an image problem they simply can't shift. <laughs> On Mulvern's faeces front line, community protection officers Jude and Dan are on a quest to stamp it out. And if they catch any dog walkers not clearing up after their furry pals, it's an instant £100 fine. Cos if you got a doggy, you need a poo bag. If you got a doggy, you need a poo bag. Anyway, that's enough of that. Yes, that's more than enough. And with an estimated 1,000 tonnes of dog poo freshly deposited across the country every single day, it's a big job. No one wants to uh, put their foot into it or be smeared. Disgusting. When you're just walking through the park and you see just a large poo hanging from a tree, it's not what you want to see when you're out in nature. Normally out hunting fly tippers, today they have dog poopers in their sight and they're ready to issue fixed penalty fines. How many dog poos have you picked up, Dan? I picked up none. But, you know, it's quite nice when it's just been done because it's oh, warm. So, so the, on a cold da, 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 morning, da. it warms your warms hand hands You put it bag. in your pocket like a pocket warmer. Well, I wouldn't do that, but it does warm your hand. But is it not a bit more solid when it's cold? Well, yeah. Because I think it's the squidginess that puts me off. Well, <laughs> if we do find some big piles of poo today, you're going to have to pick it up. But what will happen, right, if that happens is, that it'll be me going... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all right. My leg's really hurting. I don't think I'm going to be able to bend over. <laughs> Dan and Jude even supply free compostable poo bags, so dog owners really don't have any excuse for failing to pick up their four-legged friend's mess. Should we get the um, chalk spray? Oh, yes, I like doing chalk spray. Yeah. So when we see a, a little dollop, um, we give it a little spray, which it's sort of number one, it'll stop people but running into it. Number two, if they see lots of it, it just highlights actually how many there are, and that it is a bit of an issue. 
It's not long before they meet their first potential offender. Hello, you. Oh, there you go. That's where their names are written, so they just have a little read. The field's here in this nature reserve. I'm trying to see where my dog's pooed, so I remember, but still step over other people where they haven't picked up their dog poo. It's antisocial. OK, are you going to go? And the intrepid poo hunters don't have to travel far before encountering their first poo scene. Oh, we've got one here, which is a bit manky, so I'm just going to highlight it. Banks has got nothing on me. When we go out to other dog fowl instances on children's play areas, football pitches, yes, we would pick it straight up, but here is the ideal place to get that education message out there. Yes. And I don't like picking dog poo. By leaving the poo behind, Dan and Jude are sending the canine-owning criminals a clear message and warning others to be careful where they tread. Dog fouling complaints are among the most regular emails clogging up the dynamic duo's inbox. We've had a report about dog fouling. Um, oh. A man frequently parks in a parking area of the common um, most days, and he's got two Labradors. He opens his boot, doesn't walk them, lets them both foul on the grass, doesn't pick it up, puts them back in the boot, and off he goes. So we could go and have a, a working lunch, perhaps, in the car park, go and sit and eat our sandwiches like there. A steak out. But council officials aren't the only ones taking on the lawbreakers blighting Britain. With more than 100 fly tipping incidents occurring every hour across the UK. Yeah, I'm recording now. The local authorities are stretched to their limits. So some members of the public are fighting back. From farmers catching criminals in the act to investigating broken down vans. I'm videoing everything. Dumping hazardous waste. It's asbestos, it's illegal to dump it. And in a small corner of beautiful rural Hampshire, one man is leading the battle. Thanks. Internet entrepreneur and self-declared waste warrior Martin employs every trick in the book to hit back at the fly tippers. We have got to sort this out. From social media posts... Come and see this, it's disgusting. Embarrassing offenders... Maybe you're missing these lovely boots. And the authorities... Today we take this fly tip toilet and turn it into a turdis. It'll be here until the council come and take it away. But Martin doesn't work alone. Morning, young Glenn. How are you doing? Twice a week, he's joined by former council worker and friend Glenn. We're going to get him. We're going to catch someone today. I can feel it. Scouting the countryside, looking for dumped rubbish. Oh, look, here's, here's a mattress. First mattress. The pair met five years ago while out for dinner with their wives and quickly realised they shared a loathing for fly tipping. Scumbags. Scum. They really are. Total and utter scumbags. Martin made his money developing dating apps, but his real passion is catching fly tippers. Using half a million of his own money, he developed an app where the fly tip weary nation can post reports, photos and videos. Rubbish as far as I can see. Over 100 of these are currently being used in criminal investigations. I got absolutely sick and tired of my road being shut. It was closed two weeks a year through fly tipping. And then uh, another time, and I had uh, loads of stuff to get rid of, I found someone that came out and fly tipped it all after charging me 200 quid. So I had all personal stuff flying down the road and all sorts of bits and pieces like that. So, no, it's pretty disgusting. I, I just wanted it to make a difference, you know, clean it up. I'm <laughs> determined. I'm determined. He is yeah. determined. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know this. I not keep saying that, but I am determined. The app's completely free. We're working with councils for free. There is no money in this thing at all. It is a passion for me. Just want to clean this country up because I'm determined <laughs> to make a difference. <laughs> yeah. You're determined? Totally. That fridge. Fridge. So that's a fridge. That's quite a regularly hit spot, that is. That comes up on the app uh, yeah. fairly frequently. With fresh reports hitting the app daily, 
this pair of waste vigilantes are constantly investigating. Today, they're heading to Purbrook Heath to investigate a repeat offender, the Phantom Flytipper. I'm pretty sure it's one chap, but he's working in Portsmouth, coming over the hill, just emptying all his crap every night. It's just like a personal tip. Mm. Oh, no, there's the sofa there. Look, whole load of stuff there. Ah, oh, some mattresses there. Yeah. Let's go and have a look and see what we got in there, then. Yeah, no worries. Right, here we go, into the mud. <laughs> Ugh. I think you should stand in the puddle, Glenn. Do you want your boots? Yeah, boots, gloves and a bit of day glow. Right. See what we got today. Looks like bits of sofa. A gateway full of stuff. See what's inside those bags. Yeah. See if we can get some evidence, get them a nice ticket and prosecute them. <laughs> Let's just see yeah. what we've got on well, there. Oh, yeah, look. So there's look. plaster. Uh... Martin and Glenn mightn't be able to arrest fly tippers themselves, but rummaging through rubbish could produce evidence for councils to prosecute offenders. Car seat. Hey, car seat. Yeah, quite a More mess. furnishings. But all this stuff could have, you know, gone to the tip. It's just been so irresponsibly done. So someone's had some work done or paid to have some waste cleaned up, and it's ended up here, right in this lovely countryside, dumped in someone's gateway. It's dreadful. They're still in a bag? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's dumped. Is there anyone's name and address on there, or are they just straight off the shelf? No. Nah. OK, there's nothing there, really, with any identifiable stuff on. <laughs> What we've seen previously is wildlife getting its head stuck into some of these things. They just sit there and die, die in pain. It's disgusting. It really is disgusting. It's so sad to see. Morning. The super sleuths may have come away without hard evidence, but Martin isn't one to give up easily. What I'm planning to do is look for some sites to put some cameras up. That lay-by normally gets hit a lot. And we're also going to put a couple of little signs up down here. And I'm sure we're going to catch someone here because they just fly tip here far too often not to get caught. Coming up, at a sewage treatment plant in the northeast. Nice. Make a Mr. Whippy here. They're putting our poo to good use. We're actually hitting the northeast power from poo, literally. And Jude and Dan are on an undercover stakeout. Can you see anyone? In Leafy, Hampshire, internet entrepreneur Martin Montague and former council worker Glenn are out on one of their regular waste warrior patrols. Uh, fridge, fridge. On the hunt for fly tippers. Total and utter scumbags. Herbrook Heath in Winchester is a fly tip hotspot demanding a lot of their attention. What have we got here? Shay's Lounge, Rodney. <laughs> We've got our sofa and the rest of someone's floor. It's right outside someone's house, right in the middle of the countryside. Why would you do this? This road gets hit pretty much every day or two. And you can tell this is related fly tipping because this was put here first, because I remember seeing that a few days ago, and this is more recent, but there's some of that wood flooring here as well. So, looks like someone's come back. <sighs> here's a clean-up, guys. You all right, boys? You here to pick this lovely lot up? Yes, we are. Amazing, mate. Yeah, because there was another sofa here yesterday. Oh, we took that one earlier. We didn't have no room. We had a full van, like. Yeah. <laughs> But this road gets hit all the time. You must visit it yeah. quite regular. Yeah, every day. Every day. It's a continual thing. They said they're here day in, day out. Just really distressing, and I want to clean the country up. Because it's a great nation, and it shouldn't be left to be, you know, full of rotten stuff. This is, this is our planet and our, you know, our country. Yeah, I agree. It's heartbreaking at times. With the help of people like Martin and Glenn, the tables are turning on the fly tippers. In 2018, 97% of fly tipping prosecutions resulted in a conviction. And one way of gathering evidence is hidden cameras. 
Councils are increasingly using CCTV footage to catch criminals and come down hard on anyone seen dumping, with up to five years in prison. Martin and Glenn are hoping their cameras will catch the fly tipper in the act. That tree there, which has well got the ivy on it, because it'll hide the camera. What okay. do you think? Yeah, I'm just going to measure it out. OK, go. OK. There you go. <laughs> Herman Munster. <laughs> Great. Yeah? That's within range of the camera. You'll also be able to get their number plate clearly anywhere along here. That works for you, Glenn, on please. The more we can get evidence, the more we can prosecute, and possibly the fine becomes larger, or even a jail sentence. Right. Can you grab the ladder, young man? Age before beauty. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm a long way ahead of you, then. <laughs> this has got to hold someone very valuable and a little bit, um, you know, muscly, so... <laughs> I'm going to hold that for you, cos yeah. this one looks a bit wobbly. It should be all right. I think that's good. Yeah, I'm yeah. still going to hold it. Pretty fair, but, yeah, if you could hold it. Up we go. That's it. Don't move off there. I'm not. I've got it. OK. You're safe. Also, don't pass wind. <laughs> Stop staring at me off. <laughs> right. <laughs> These cameras are really great. They work at night. They work during the day. A bit more. And they, they're motion activated. That's perfect. I can see all of that lay-by in there. That's good. Right, she's good to go. A little bit of camouflage. Something like that. OK, awesome. Having gone to great pains to hide the grime cams, Martin and Glenn have to obey the law and inform the public the cameras are there. We've tried all different sorts of texts, but they hate the publicly shamed bit. We could work about this. Need to make sure it's straight. That's it, it's straight. Everyone hates the publicly shamed bit. And we do, we post them on our Facebook page when uh, we catch someone in the acts. These work really well, unless they can't read or are completely stupid, because it says that CCTV's operating, and it is, and it says that they'll get fined or prosecuted, and they will. It'll be interesting to see if our guy here can read. While Martin and Glenn rely on high-tech surveillance equipment, in Malvern, dog poo busters Dan and Jude are falling back on more old-fashioned methods. Can you see anyone? A stakeout. Do you know what um, Bob Marley likes in his donuts? He likes them with jamming. Yeah. You know what Bunny Whaler likes with his donuts? He likes them with a jam in too. Aware their suspect walks his dog here during his lunch break, they've opted for a working lunch. If they catch him failing to clear up after his pooches, they can slap him with a £100 on-the-spot fine. There is some clear intel to suggest it's happening. Yeah, a serial non-picker-upper of poo. Or a super pooper, <laughs> if you like. They challenged him and he told them to... To do one? Yeah. And you're possibly not as polite as that. But, you know, we can have a friendly chat with him, too. There's a magpie. Mr Magpie? They may have spotted a magpie, but after an hour, sadly, no super pooper. So have you finished your lunch? Mm, no, yeah, I have. I was going to eat those, but I'm not going to. Well, it doesn't look like our guy no. is going to come. A failed yeah. steak cake. I don't think it's failed, though, because our van is here, giving people that little bit of reassurance yeah, we'll that we're, right. we're on it. Yeah, I suppose. Right, let's get out of here, then. And while they haven't caught their suspect... Shall I put the demister on? Yes, please. They are on their way to meet someone with a new approach to dealing with the poo problem. There's a guy who lives in Malvern, and he's invented a gas lamp that is powered by dog poo. Let's go and see a man about a poo. It, it's all a bit spooky it is, looking, isn't it? The, 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 the mist is down low. Hey, are you, Mr. Harper? Hi, Hello, Hiya. Mr. Harper. We've come to have a look at your lamp. I've just come down. Okay. 
we want to know how it, it works. works. Really. Well, so we have to catch people right at the beginning here and lift up the lid, and there is a nice free paper bag. Oh, okay. Paper. It up. Yeah. So here's the typical thing of dog poo just left on the side. You can just gather it all together with the shovel arrangement, and then you flip it underneath, and then there's a bag of poo. It's all waterproof. So even a more dribbly one would be all right? Oh, yeah, we well. do a lot of dribbly ones. <laughs> The poop has been scooped, but that's not the end of its journey. And what you have here is a, a lid oh. down into a hopper. OK. And I'll just drop it down into there, and then you just drop the lid. So you have to turn that around ten times. Right, that means it's now got the bag, and it gets pushed down and opened up and ends up inside the biodigester. The gas is made by methanogen bacteria, which are seeded into the okay. biodigester to then end up with biogas coming out. So, and that so just floats up the top in big bubbles. So my understanding there, then, correct me if I'm wrong, on, the methanogens are effectively eating the poo and farting out gas. In crude terms, it, yeah, yes. Well, I like to, we like to get it to a level that me and you Don't can worry, understand. Don't worry, I'm used to dealing with yeah. muck. Yeah. But the important thing is, is the public see that dog poo is useful. There we are. There's a spark generator. Oh, wow. And there's your mantle running for you. Brilliant. And it's not just in Malvern they're taking advantage of the power of poo. In the northeast, near Newcastle, the Howden sewage plant is using Geordie poo to feed the same hungry, farting bugs. This enormous site handles up to 12,000 litres of wastewater a second, all of it put through a rigorous treatment process to make it safe to release into the River Tyne as fully recycled water. Heading up the team is sludge supervisor Tony Rutherford, in charge of treating the water. And here, nothing goes to waste. We're not only a sewage treatment works, we actually collect the raw sludge from that process to create power from poo. So what people don't realise is we're actually hitting the northeast as well. The power comes from the leftover sludge, which is dried and steamed to kill off any harmful bacteria. We cook it, so cook the poo before it goes into the digesters for the bugs to eat. Then it's feeding time, as millions of digester bugs feed on the sludge. So this guy here, this bug, he's eating and feeding on all of this sludge. That's the food for these activated bugs, and they love it. As they digest their dinner, they let off a gas called biomethane, which is then sent to the national grid. It is providing gas for people to use in their homes for cooking and for central heating, etc. So it's the full cycle, power from poo, literally. But the digester bugs that power our homes are fussy little eaters. The sludge has to be the right consistency for the bugs, so if it's not good for them, it can kill them. And then, worst case scenario, we would have to empty one of the tanks. We'll have to start the process all over again, and this can take months to do. To avoid such a calamity, the poo is tested round the clock. Well, let's hope it's a better sample than yesterday, because it was a bit thick yesterday. I had to put what some dilution on here, so... All right. I couldn't even get out the pipe, so... No way. No, I thought it was that thick. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Stick these glasses on, because you don't want this in your eye. Nice one. Oh, nice one, Marty. Good sample. Looks better than yesterday, does it? Yeah. It's nice. Good. Just what we want. Yeah. We call it sludge, but it's poo. It's quite a strong smell. Not like poo, but, but it's got quite a distinctive smell. And it is pretty disgusting to the bugs that live in the digesters. This is the creme de la creme. They absolutely love this stuff. This is what's going to make us loads of biogas. Yeah, looks much better. Nice. Like a Mr Whippy, eh? For not like a Mr Whippy I've had at home, I wouldn't give that to the bin. <laughs> Coming up. Get cracking, yeah? Yeah. Tony and his team face a mammoth blockage that could overflow into the Tyne. We've got to get the whole lot out. And Martin and Glenn step it up a notch. Now, this is what people in the army use for the height of concealment. To catch the elusive fly tipper. Can you see me? No, not at all, Glenn. I absolutely detest fly tippers. 
Internet entrepreneur Martin Montague invented an app to help the public inform on fly-tipping villains. I think that they should all be banged up. We, we need to get hold of their vehicles and crush them, fine them. And today, along with his partner in grime, Glenn Mackay, they're off to check some cameras set up at a fly-tip hotspot at Purbrook Heath, near Winchester. God, it's a lovely bit of the world, this, isn't it? Why do people want to just ruin it? I have no idea. We are in a national park. It's beautiful. There's deer and animals and wildlife. And then you've got vermin that just keeps dumping this crap everywhere. This is our... Look at this. Oh, God, look at that. Watch out. Oh. That's roofing, isn't it? And I think Stop. it's just ripped the bottom of the car out as well. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, good grief. Look at this. Asbestos, I reckon. That's definitely asbestos. Oh, why do people do this? Right. I need to get the gloves out of the boot. Yeah. <sighs> the problem is we've now got a piece of asbestos stuck under the car. And me a pair of jeans. Be grateful I'm letting you crawl on the floor. No, thank you very car. much for this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very honoured. Well, I'm driving. <laughs> Fair enough. Keeps him fit. This is the sort of damage that it does when you get, you know, your new, nice new electric, eco-friendly car ruined by a fly tipper. We have a serious problem. This has got itself lodged into Savick Martin. OK, I'm going to have to sacrifice myself and get down there and have a look. It's all right, I've got it. you got it? <laughs> Stick it on there. Nasty right off. Made my day, that has. Yeah. Made my day watching <laughs> you kneeling in the dirt, Glenn. <laughs> I'm used to that. <laughs> this fly-tip roadblock may have slowed them down, but nothing will stop them checking the grime-catching cameras they put up last week. Fly tipper is coming down this road every day or two. Right. This is where the cameras are, isn't it? Yeah. Because there's that tree. Ugh. Ugh. So we can get the car out, <laughs> otherwise we'll be pushing it out. <laughs> well, this lay-by looks clear now. So that's good because the signs are working. Yeah. Um, but there's probably nothing on the cameras because there's no fly tip in here. The cameras and signs seem to be working, although the phantom has still evaded them. Never deterred, Martin's got a plan B. Are you up for a bit of um, late night work tonight? Yeah, why not? We'll give it a go. Cool. What, what have you got planned? Well, I want to stake the road out that leads into all of those roads that comes over the top of the hill. Yeah. I've got some uh, real state of the art walkie talkies. Yeah. OK, you need code names, just to make sure it's the two of us talking and no-one else listening. I'm going to be Big Dog, you know, dog with a W. Dog. Dog. Big Good. Dog. So you Do have you want to me? say Big Dog. OK. Now, now, you can be, I was thinking of you, Grey Wolf. Grey Wolf? Grey Wolf, yeah. It's not really a rapper's name, is no, it? No, but... <laughs> Grey Wolf. So, go on, practice it. Grey Wolf, Gr over. Grey Wolf, over. Grey Wolf, over. Yeah, now see. Come right. in, big dog. That's it. It's like, oh, no. Perfect. <laughs> you know the things you get me doing. I know. It's all good. It's all good. While Martin and Glenn set up their fly tipper trap, on the banks of the River Tyne at the Howden sewage plant, there's a problem. We've got a problem with screen number four. We've got a high level in there. Yeah. All right. And I think the screen's blocked. When the screens are working, they degrit and separate 12,000 tonnes of raw sewage into liquids and solids. Then the filtered water flows into the tyne. But when the system breaks down, there's a risk of sewage pumping into the river instead. Tony Rutherford and his team regularly deal with all sorts of breakdowns and blockages. We get all sorts of weird and wonderful things down the sewer, false teeth. Uh, credit cards, somebody's wallet, these things have been returned to people, not the false teeth, that is. Uh, one of the most crazy things we ever found was a nine-foot python. It was dead, of course, when the guys pulled it out of the screen, but uh, they still got quite a big shock. As you can uh, quite imagine taking a nine-foot snake out of a, a sewer network in the northeast of England. 
Get cracking, yeah? But no matter what the blockage is this time, there's only one way to fix it. Certainly in that front one. Hands on. Got a large blockage there. So what do you reckon it is, Terry? Uh, a lot of it. Wait, wait, wait. Wet wipes. Wet wipes. Just a big rag roll. This enormous lump may look like a roll of carpet, but it's probably made up of some of the millions of wet wipes we buy in the UK every year. Terry, if you go and sort the crane out, yep, yep. Marty and Kev bring the hook yep. up. This is a custom-made fish hook. So literally, we're going fishing. And this is the fun bit. We're fishing in the sewer. <laughs> it's pretty minging, isn't it? Yeah, it's hooked. It's quite a size, actually. Is it going to drop? Steady away. No, it's away. This one's taking a bit of fishing out. Back in. Despite a hook big enough to land a shark and four eager fishermen, this could be the one that gets away. We've got to get the whole lot out. It's an awkward sucker. Oh. Oh. This time, Marty, this time. I think you've got it there. Lovely. Well done, guys. You did well there. Nice. So, pretty big pile of rag here. We've got everything in it. Cotton buds, plastic bags. About 90% of bunged up sewers are caused by wet wipes. But in today's catch, there's all sorts. What's that? I wouldn't like to say. <laughs> It's a pair of stockings, I think. Or what was a pair of stockings? Some more underwear. You know, how, do, how does that get down there? Sewage monsters like this one aren't always caught, and thousands of our used wet wipes end up in our rivers and seas. There's no way that's going to break down in the sewer. And it twists around things, creates a ball. And I mean, hundreds and thousands of these turn into these blockages. And, I mean, that's about seven, eight, nine pounds in weight. It's really heavy. Ugh, disgusting. Tony and his sludge team have the enormous task of taking what we flush down the toilet and turning it into gas to heat our homes and clean recycled water. So, look at this. Nice, clean water. And as a keen fisherman, Tony has a vested interest in keeping our rivers clean. This area of the Tyne go back 50 years ago, which isn't that long ago, because of the industry and all of raw sewage, the river was literally dead, and migratory fish like salmon and sea trout couldn't swim up through the Tyne. Whereas now, um, I mean, I'm a fisherman, so I should know the River Tyne, to me, is the best salmon fishing river in England and Wales. And I actually caught a fish of a lifetime a couple of years ago really proud to be able to contribute to the environment looking after the river. It's a good result for Tony. But over in Hampshire... I'm starving. Did you have breakfast? Yeah, but only fruit. Self-appointed grime-fighting superheroes Martin and Glenn are still on the trail of the phantom fly tipper. I think we stake this place out, shall we? Yeah, why not? And for a special mission, you need a special outfit. We're going to do it properly. Now, this is what people in the army use when, for the height of concealment. So they can go days lying in this sort of stuff. You're asking me to go days out here now? No, 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 not days, just tonight. Great. Yeah. Come on, then, let's see it on you. OK, deputy dog. No, no big not... dog. Big dog. I think you're molting as well. <laughs> Over by the tree. <laughs> Do you know what? That is surprisingly good, Glenn. Can you see me? No, not at all, Glenn. I think the trousers are falling down. <laughs> <laughs> Just lay on the floor there, see what it looks like on the grass. <laughs> How long am I lying here for? Six, seven hours, maybe. You'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> The only thing that gives you away just a tiny bit is your face. So rub some dirt on your hands and then blend it in. I'm just worried whether it's dog poo. <laughs> get, get, get some dirt on your face. Right, look, let me help you. Got it, you do it. 
Oh, my God. <laughs> there you go, Mr. Manor. <laughs> they may be dressing up as soldiers, but to Martin and Glenn, catching their serial fly tipper is a serious business. Right, I'll stick my stuff on and then we'll get into position. If I don't catch someone tonight, <coughs> it's going to be a great disappointment to me. I don't think I'm an extra large. <laughs> and then... Coming up... <coughs> Dan reaches his limit. No, I'm not picking that up. There's no way. And Martin and Glenn... Same van, same van. ..are on the fly tip front line. Get in the bushes. Bushes. Okay. Get in the ditch. In Hampshire. Right, let's go get these fly tippers. Yeah, we're on the way. Let's do it. Make sure you see them. Vigilante waste warriors Martin and Glenn are on a covert mission to catch a serial fly tipper plaguing the countryside. Oh, God, I've got stuck in the seatbelt. Oh, no. That's... Ah. OK, here we go. Oh. oh. Should you go forward? Yep. Are you in? Just about. Do you know, I'm really hoping for a good result tonight. Yeah. It'd be good if we could. And we will. The Phantom fly tipper may have eluded them so far, but if they catch him in the act, their evidence could lead to a prosecution. It's getting even better as the sun goes down. This camouflage is amazing. I can't even see you against that bush. So what we do is we go in here, because they always tip along here. Right. We're just getting to this ditch, I think, here. And use the camouflage, additional camouflage. I'm going to put this around my neck. <sighs> Can you see? I can see. Right, that's it. We just sit and wait now. If he comes down here tonight in the next hour or two, we got him, haven't we? Yeah. Now all they've got to do is wait. It's all going to be worth it. In the picture postcard town of Malvern, deep in the Worcestershire countryside, Two other grime-fighting heroes are on the hunt for a different type of repeat offender. Oh, we've got one here, which is a bit manky. Hot on a dog poo trail are waste enforcement officers Dan and Jude. The fixed penalty notices. Hundred pounds. Yeah. But it's not just prosecutions which get results. Education is also key to rid Malvern of its dog poo problem. There's a lot of poo that's bagged and then not put in the bin. So we thought, let's use the idea to decorate a tree with messages as well about the danger of dog poo and the dangers of not picking it up. So do you think it looks good? I think it's a, 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 an excellent message to get across. It's not really poo. It's, it's earth in these bags. You know, there's, there's several jobs in the world, probably not many of them, where you put fake poo in a tree. So we're quite unique there. Unfortunately for Dan, Jude isn't quite finished with his education today. Come on, then. She still has plans for Dan to overcome his visceral fear of dog poo. You're I've... going to have to <laughs> pick one up. And it doesn't take long for them to come across a particularly unhealthy specimen. I'm not picking that up. There's no way, but I will no, spray it. No, we, this is the one we're going to pick up. No, I'm not picking that up. There's no way. As your senior, I think it is time for you to lose your dog poo virginity and pick this poo up. You'll be doing a great service to everybody who uses this pathway because this is not a nice poo. Have you been feeding dogs curry? It's a horrible poo. You could have found me a more solid poo. <laughs> no, no, this is the poo to start on. Well, I mean, I suppose if up? I could do this poo, I could do any poo. Exactly. So you've got your bag. So start, start the thick end. The thick the end. Swoop. Start up here somewhere. Yeah, just... Actually, no, do no, I need no. a run-up to it? <laughs> just, just sweep it into your hand like that, and then... <laughs> Come on, just get it done. <gasps> pick it, pick it all <laughs> That's oh, horrible. Oh, well done, it's horrible. <laughs> so what we do with this now is we leave it in a tree. That's all right. Uh, no, we don't. What we do with this is we put it in a bin. This is where 
he did it for the first time. Yeah. I feel I should carve my name in the tree or something. <laughs> swing, swing, swing the poo. It's the end of a long, hard shift for Jude and Dan. But in Hampshire, as night draws in, work is only just beginning. Grey wool. Yes, big dog. You smell like you have definitely crawled through something. Yeah. Oh, dear. And there's still no sign of the phantom fly tipper. I reckon I should take cover under the bush there. Yeah. You should go across the road into the woods. Sounds good to me. Right, let's do it. Ah. Ah. I think it's probably one or two people doing 80% of the mess here. Um, so hopefully we should get them on this stakeout. Hold on, pressing the wrong buttons. Grey wool. That side. Big dog. Silver fox in position now. Good, let's see what action comes down here now. I guess this is just going a bit above and beyond to catch fly tippers, but to be fair, someone needs to get out and do this kind of stuff. I want to see them prosecuted. I want to see them fined. So, you know, we need to take matters into our own hands to gather the evidence to do that. And if that means me dressing as a tree, I'll do it. I don't care. Big dog, just hearing a vehicle. Not sure where he's going. They might be coming your way, over. Something's coming. Shh. There's a van, there and it's a, van. it's a tipper. It's a tipper. Tipper van. Quick, let's get down there. Hold on, his brake lights are still on down the road. Really? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. The truck has stopped about a quarter of a mile down the road. They could be fly tipping. Grey Wolf, come with me. I'm coming. Just take the tree cover on the side. Hold on. He must Hold have... on, look. Lights. Get in the bushes. Bushes. Get oh, in the ditch. Oh, bloody hell, there's more fly tipping here. Is there? Careful, because you don't know what there is. Don't lie down there. Same van, same van. That's the same van. That is the same That's van. That's the same vehicle. Couldn't get a registration number. He's gone. The driver has evaded them, but their hunch was spot on. Here, Martin, look at this. What? What is it? Oh, my word. Look at those tyre prints, they're perfect. We've had pouring rain today. Those are fresh tyre prints. <sighs> so he's just pulled up and dumped there. Just couldn't get here in time. Had we been, in, you know, down another half a mile, we'd have got him. We were so close tonight. That was disappointing. It is disappointing. It's that is really off. disappointing. We'll have to come back and get them. We'll definitely get them. They will not get away with this. That is a promise. Look, it says no fly tipping. Malvern's enforcement officers take a stand and go supersized. We need bigger sign and a big hand that comes out and goes. Surrey's trainee bog buster gets an initiation by sewage and the mother of all blockages. It's got an eggy smell, it's got a fatty smell, a foul smell. And Durham's dodgiest scrap man. And then he clocks him. He's off like a rabbit. Who's clocking up a rap sheet as long as a grime ridden lay by. I'm assuming you haven't got a scrap metal collector's license for Durham. No. 